Hello everyone and welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. Today we're going to get a little dirty. We are going to cast the midsection in some Flex Foam at 15 today. As some of you may have seen in my previous video, um, I have already done kind of a test piece for the suit. But today I want to make a final piece because I plan on wearing the suit this Halloween. I was going to wear it to a Comic Con. I just don't know yet if I want to go that big. I want to start small. We're going to wear the suit around the house, pass out candy to the kids, and just see how it does, and eventually move up to a Comic-Con if I can. But today, we got to start doing this foam piece. This will help make the suit very wearable, because if we don't do the foam and we just use the plastic midsection that I 3D printed, the masterpiece, a lot of those plastic pieces are going to rub together, cause a lot of friction, make it uncomfortable, make it noisy. In the original Robocop movie, they casted the midsection in latex foam rubber. So we're not using latex, we're using a urethane foam rubber, which is a lot more durable, a lot longer lasting, and we should be able to knock it out of the park. So I'm going to kind of show you what I do and hope you enjoy. Thank you. using today is Smooth On's Flex Foam at 15. It is a urethane foam rubber and it is two parts per one part A. So that means it's all one one ratio. It's equal ratio but you have two parts of the blue stuff per one part of the A. We're going to put a black pigment in. Uh, the black pigment is just a good backing. I'm going to go ahead and spray it on with some uh, upholstery uh, type stain or paint to kind of go into the foam and get the color I want. But this is what we start with, Smooth On Flex Foam at 15. Uh, I give a little bit more detail in my video when I first did it, but I just wanted to do a quick uh, reintroduction for my new subscribers or my new viewers. So this is what we're going to do here. Flex Foam at 15. So again, this is my first mold. I did two molds. So this is the front piece of the Robocop suit midsection. And I also have another mold that looks practically the same, but it's the back piece. So we're going to start doing this. I did the mold with Rebound 25, which is also a Smooth On product. And I just did a two-part fiberglass jacket on the back. Again, there's another video that kind of explains that, but just a, a quick detail of what I'm using and what we're going to do. So let's hop into it. You're going to start using some Flex Foam at 15. That's pretty much what you're going to look like. You're going to have three party cups. I prefer the clear cups. You can use the red cups. Sometimes the, the red cups will bleed the inner white liner depending on the material. I'm, I don't think it would do it with this. I didn't want to risk it. Um, so I'm using the clear party cups. We have two parts B to one part A. We're going to mix these two together, add the black pigment in, mix that all together, and then we're going to add this guy in. So let me show you. All right, we're going to go ahead and add in our pigment. You kind of just wing it and you put as much in as you need to get the desired color that you want. It's not going to be like a perfect, you know, like rich dark black. You're probably just going to get a really dark gray, but it's a good backing to have when you use your, your paint. This takes special paint. You can't just use regular spray paint. I'm actually using a fabric paint for it, which I'll show you guys when this is all finished up. But as you can see there, we're kind of like a dark gray. I'm probably going to add a little bit more in and try to get a darker gray. I've never been able to get it black. So there we go. That's our that's our two parts of B. And then we have our one part A here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour this in here, mix it all up for about a minute, and then we're going to go to work. So Flex Foam at 15 can be used on large molds like this. I haven't seen very many videos of it being used on large molds, a lot of small Batman stuff, but it will definitely work on a large mold like this. You'll have to do it in sections. So me, I, I usually start probably about, I, I, I kind of go up to here on my first round, and then I move up and I do the other half, and then I got to kind of rotate the mold because this stuff, expands four times its volume well it doesn't expand its volume very well on walls you kind of have to lean it and let let it sit on gravity for it to expand up 
So you need that back pressure. You're not going to get the back pressure on a wall like that. So I do have to rotate this mold around a little bit to get this stuff to expand right. Here, you know, where it's being pulled down by gravity is perfect. It expands amazing, but I do have to rotate it. So if you do have a mold like this, you will have to do that. So let's get to it. So we are mixing in all of our parts here. This stuff can be kind of nerve wracking. You got it like a one minute mix time and you only have a two minute pot life. So you got to work fast. And it's a little nerve wracking because I have such a large, large mold. If I had a smaller mold, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. I'll get the walls real good. All right, let's pour all this stuff in here. I kind of mix it as I pour, too. <laughs> and then I'm going to use a brush to really pull all this up on the walls, which it will still expand a little bit on the walls, but not as much as I would like. So, there we go. Get as much as I can out of that cup. All right, so we're going to go to work now and start brushing all this, mixing in all that air with it. This is kind of the same thing you do with resin, but you want to get the undercuts. I have some undercuts here that I really need to make sure it gets all that detail. But you just kind of keep working it like that. Work it up on the walls. Get every detail. There we go. So I just wanted to show you guys how far one cup gets you on a large mold. Now if you were doing something smaller, one cup might have been enough for you. But in my case, this is kind of as far as I get on my mold with one cup. And then on the second cup, I'll use that to, to get the rest of the mold. And then I'm going to come back and get some of the thin spots. Sometimes you'll get some thin spots on some of your edges, some of your undercuts, and I got to come in and, and brush some more on. And then for this side right here, I'm going to have to rotate the mold over and then kind of brush that in to get the back pressure for it to expand a little better. So as you can see, I have the mold now on its side. That's going to allow me to build up these walls right here. And as I said before, you got to get the correct back pressure. You're not going to get back pressure with it on its side like that. So if you do have a mold that does have walls like this, you might have to rotate it and get creative. I'm using a lacquer thinner uh, can to kind of hold it up on its side. I'm going to do some mixing and I'm going to hit all these walls in here and help build those up and get those a little bit more uh, structurally sound. So I just wanted to show you guys here on its side what I'm doing. I used about a half a cup of material. And you just use your brush and you kind of just work it. I'm trying to build these side walls up of the of the midsection. And you can see the air bubbles. That's the, the material starting to kind of expand. And then I kind of did the detail coat already. So I'm not too concerned about getting, you know, every little spot perfectly. I just really want to build the walls up so I don't have too many thin spots. Because even though this does expand four times its volume you still can get thin spots on the walls if you're not really moving it around good with the brush. All right guys, so we just got done um, casting both the front and the back midsection. They're still both in the molds. I just wanted to show you guys how I demold this. This is a two-part fiberglass jacket, so if I were to actually do this and cast this in resin, you're going to need that because it becomes so rigid with the resin and the fiberglass inside the mold that you actually have to take this jacket off in order to demold it. But because this is urethane foam rubber and it's really soft, it's not rigid at all and it flexes, I don't even have to take the, I don't have to take the jacket off or anything. So we're just going to pull the the foam casting right out the mold and let's just see how it looks together hopefully I can do this without 
causing too much damage. I use some of the flashing to help pull everything off. So it'll take us a minute. Okay, some of the flashing came off. Just trying to break the suction. Once you break the su suction initially, it usually pulls off pretty easily. In some cases. there we go so even though we use the black pigment um, you could tell it's still kind of a, a light gray there but we're gonna paint over this so there's really no worries you can tell kind of when I continued the the next part of it but that's no big deal that's all gonna get painted over so yeah guys there it is it looks pretty good and we're gonna keep going so Halloween is about 21 days away and I really want to try to wear my RoboCop suit, at least just for that day. So I've been working hard trying to get this midsection done. And I haven't actually showed you guys what it looks like finished and on me. So I did want to show you what it looks like. So this is the foam midsection. It is all attached using Velcro. I super glued the Velcro into the actual midsections and it looks pretty good. Um, it is not completely finished yet. It still needs to be painted. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking and just kind of show you guys what it looks like. Trying to work on that robot walk. I don't quite have it. A little more practice. But I'll be wearing a black spandex suit underneath it. Um, so I look kind of bulky right now with everything. But I think it's gonna work out. It feels really comfortable. I actually had put on the hard midsection on my last Robocop suit and it was miserable. It, it, everything scraped and poked at you, but this actually feels really good, really soft. And I have a feeling it's gonna work at least for a little bit, guys. So stay tuned for more. My next video will be me painting this urethane foam rubber, which sounds like an easy task, but it really isn't because nothing wants to stick to urethane. So I was fortunate enough to find a paint that does work, but that's in the next video and I'll show you guys how to do that. So yeah, there it is. It works. It's awesome. Thank you.